tells me how many miles it has. And I'm like, that's gotta be a mistake. That's a lot of miles for a Road King. What's up guys, Sean from SRK Cycles and Bikes and Beards. And some people know part of the story. Some people know none of the story. No one knows all the story, including myself, but I know a whole lot more than all you guys do. And that's the story of my 99, my almost 100,000 mile Harley Davidson Road King. And I'm gonna tell you guys all about it. So about a year ago, I got a call from a lady and she had, she had this bike and she's like, I'm looking to sell this bike. It's always kind of unusual when a, when a, when a woman calls and they want to sell a, 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 a big, large bike like this. I really didn't think anything of it. I should have. She gives me a call. I want to sell this bike. She says the CVO Road King. I think she was wrong about what year it was. So then she, I'm like, can you send me some pictures of it? She sends me some pictures, and I'm like, oh, that's not a CVO Road King. That's, that's, a, that's something. She's like, oh, you know, I sent, I sent you the wrong pictures. So at this point, it's, it's looking a little funny. Um, she's a very nice, very nice older lady. She finally sends me the right pictures, and she tells me how many miles it has. And I'm like, that's got to be a mistake. That's a lot of miles for a Road King. At the time, I think it had 98,000 miles or 96,000 miles or something like that. So actually, this story actually starts about a year before let me go back to that, where I had a 117,000 mile Road King. This is the Road King that I consider to be my personal Road King. I loved it. I cherished it. We had a lot of good times together. Not as many as I would have liked, but that is life. I am going to sell this bike, and I am pretty sure it might be the cheapest Road King for sale in existence. That's not just an entire piece of junk. Uh, this thing's pretty awesome. Now, this Road King, I don't know if I mentioned this, um, 117,000 miles on it. Now, I've always loved the Road Kings. I think they're, um, I think they're awesome bikes. It kind of fits my personality. I don't need that stereo, I don't need that radio, I don't need that fairing or nothing like that. Uh, I've not always been a fan of Harleys, but when I started becoming a fan, I, mean, I became a fan after riding them. And I really enjoyed them, and, and the Road King is really what kind of brought me into the scene. So one of my dealerships called me up about three years ago, and they said, I've got a Road King for you. 115,000 mile anniversary 2003 Harley Davidson Road King. And I was like, I need that bike. I want that bike. Now, I love having bikes like this. I love having really, really high mileage, like, like crazy high mileage Harley Davidsons in my personal collection because we sell a lot of higher mileage Harley Davidsons, you know, 40,000 miles, 50,000 miles, 60,000 miles. And sometimes guys will come in and they, they want a Harley Davidson or they want a motorcycle and they don't know, they're not super versed about how long these bikes can really last. And they'll be like, oh, this one's got 45,000 miles. And they're, maybe they're from the sport bike scene or, or their buddies don't really ride their bikes that much. And they'd be like, oh, that's, that's too many miles. And I'd be like, hold on a second. My bike over here has 117,000 miles and it kind of flips a little switch in their mind. They're like, oh, these bikes can last a long time. So I had that bike. I was actually looking for a quarter million mile Harley Davidson. And I'm still looking for a quarter million mile Harley Davidson to kind of keep in my own collection and do some videos with. But so I had that bike for a little while. Didn't get to ride it as much as I was hoping to. Ended up selling it to a local police officer, really nice guy. So that kind of feels you know why I like these high mileage Harley Davidson. And I just, it's, it's more of a story. It's like when you own a diesel vehicle and it's got 300 or 500 or 800,000 miles, you know, that's, that's the exciting part. And you don't feel bad about putting miles on, but also it also gets you, you know, this bike would normally be about $15,000, $14,000 if it had 8,000 miles. And it, it gets you into a cooler bike than what you actually, what you, you know, normally could afford if you have super high miles on it. The problem is putting a number on a bike like this. Now, I didn't actually know, I learned more about the little bit of the backstory later but I'm trying to figure out what a good number is. And even, you know, CVOs. So you always have to compare what they could also buy for that type of thing. You know, you have guys with 80,000 miles are trying to sell their bike for $2,000 less. So you, so you have an option of buying one with 80,000 miles or one with 10,000 miles. And there's only a $2,000 spread. It doesn't make any sense. Someone's, they're, they're not going to buy yours. They're going to buy the one for $2,000 more and get, you know, 70,000 less miles. So with, with 99,000 miles, it was a little tough coming up with a number, and obviously I don't want to offend anyone when I give them the number. So I tell her the number of 4,200 bucks. It's, it's hard to put a number on a bike like that because the market is so small, the people who actually want it. Now, I was not actually here when she came and dropped off the bike, so I never got the meter. After I, I saw the bike, I loved it. It was everything she said it was. It came with the extra tour pack and the windshield. It had good tires on it. She told me that it was her husband's bike, and that made sense. She said it was her husband's bike, and that he only rode it once a year. 
And I'm like, once a year, holy cow, you know? And he bought it, he bought the bike brand new. Now this once a year trip took two months. He would ride it once a year for two months. And before the trip, you'd take it to you know, Harley Davidson and get everything fixed and checked out. And after the trip, he'd get it checked out and get everything, you know, make sure everything's working right. And that's how he was able to rack up, you know, 90, 98,000 miles in 10 years. So I, I, after I got the bike, I started making the connection. You know, how come I never talked to the husband? So I, I, I called the lady up. I, I thanked her. I was like, hey, I, I saw the bike. It's beautiful. I really like it. And I said, I, I was like, did, did your husband die? And she's like, yes, my, my husband recently passed away and that's why she was selling, that's why she was selling, you know, the motorcycle. And I told her that, well, you know what? Cause you know, we're a dealer and we're, we're used to flipping stuff. And I, I told her, I was like, you know, I'm gonna keep that bike for myself. I'm gonna keep that bike as my personal bike. And for whatever reason, that really meant a lot to her. She, she's like, I, I really like that. I'm really glad you said that, that you're gonna keep this bike for yourself. And I, I guess it's a, that people like to know, you know, you, you, have, you, you make a connection with, with people and then from from them you kind of make a connection with the things that they own and people like to know that it's going to get used and it's going to get loved and it's going to get treated properly you know better than some like some stranger who might do horrible things to the bike and since then I, i've done you know I, I i ride it around all the time i've really enjoyed the bike i took i took a trip to georgia with it on today's episode i attempt to drive a hundred thousand mile harley davidson from pennsylvania to georgia a tech tells me that my transmission might be toast, and I hang out with Ed from VinWiki. Hoping to run over 100,000 miles on that trip. I did not, I did not make it. Um, if you guys saw the video on my trip to Georgia, I uh, started having a few issues with it. At one point, the lights just, at night, the lights just all turned off. I had no lights at all. I got to take flashlights to the front and the back so I can actually get to a hotel. Our first problem is, I don't have a headlight. None of my lights work. Oh, okay, well, the brake lights work. Later in my trip, it started leaking oil all over the back tire, so I was taking left-hand turns a little lightly than what I normally would. And then I see this underneath the bike. I don't know if you can see that. We got ourselves an old fashioned uh, oil leak. So where's it leaking from? Yeah, up inside right here where your belt pulley comes into your transmission. Okay. So you got your inner primary's gotta come off, the whole primary's gotta come off, all your belt pulley system, you got a main seal. You have a six gear main drive there. If those bearing ain't no good, then you're gonna have to gut the whole transmission and redo it all. But, okay, so. But this could just be seals all the way around. Okay. So best case scenario, it's seals. All these things, I'm gonna get it fixed. I'm gonna take it to the shop. My plans for the bike, I, I do plan on taking it to a dyno. I wanna see what a 99,000 mile a CVL does on the dyno. Uh, I'm under the impression this thing has never been completely rebuilt. I am gonna end up fixing everything. Fix, I think the shaft seal leak, that was the problem. The problem with the headlights was that the relay started falling out and they just pushed it back in. So it is a, a well-running bike, and another one of my plans is to, is to continue making videos with it, but also to do an iron butt challenge, which is, I think, well, I think iron butts have made the big thing, I think the saddle sore, so 1,000 miles in 24 hours. And I would like to do that while I run over 100,000 miles on the bike. That's one of my plans, I'd like to do that. Before I do that, I gotta get take to the Harley place. I've probably done it this winter time, while I get it to put on the dyno to see what, see, really see how, what kind of power loss. I, I, I can assure you, that thing runs well for 99,000 miles. I don't think it really lost any power. And then the only time I'll replace it, the only time I'll sell it or possibly just give it away is when I replace it with a higher mileage one. And I do like the CVO. I do like hanging around with the CVO. So if someone, if someone comes up and they've got a higher mileage CVO, a 200,000 mile CVO Road King, that's gonna be pretty tempting. I'll probably end up buying it and I'll probably end up selling this or giving this away depending on how many subscribers we have. All right guys, so let me know what you guys think I should do with this bike. A couple ideas. I kind of want to supercharge it or turbocharge it. Maybe I can twin charge it. That'd be fun. I guess I could throw NOS at it. That's not exciting, that's kind of easy. Um, just picked up these bikes. These bikes are gonna be in the video for next week. And so we got a lot of, a lot of options. Guys, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you guys later. Comment below what you think I should do with that bike. And if you want to see another video about another cool bike that I own, click 
right here or I don't know it's somewhere just click somewhere to check it out we'll see you guys later